The actions performed in this video are only to be attempted under medical supervision. Fasting can be extremely dangerous if not done correctly and in some cases may result in organ failure and death. Please consult a medical professional and do your own research before attempting any form of prolonged fasting. Viewer discretion is advised. Hello everyone and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for tuning in to today's video. We're on day two of our 20 day water slash dry fast. Uh, we're just approaching the 44 hour mark. Um, so without further ado, let's go do our second weigh in. Day two, weigh in at 171 pounds, 0.8. So before I jump into today's video, I just want to quick talk about ketosis. Um, ketones are essentially what's powering me right now. And um, I do have this bottle of ketone test strips. I don't know if you could see it. I bought it on Amazon. Uh, a long time ago, I think it was less than $10, and essentially what you do is you pee on these little strips. So I have two here, one I just used about uh, 20 minutes ago, the other one is a fresh strip from the box, so you can see the difference. The darker one is the one that's tested, the lighter one is the one that's from the box. And how you determine how strong the ketone levels are is you just take it and put it up to here. So I'm gonna match it first. It looks like it's about eight millimoles of ketones per liter of body fluid. So just gonna match it there. Not sure if you can see that. So it's really easy, um, just takes a few seconds and um, the results will essentially tell you what level of ketosis your body is in. So we're about 44 hours into this water fast. I'm probably going to switch to dry tomorrow just because it's a Wednesday. Wednesdays are really busy for me at work, um, so it might hopefully provide me enough of a distraction to avoid fluids throughout the day. Um, so I'm going to try to make tomorrow a dry fasting date. I'll probably drink a bunch of water and tea and everything before I go to bed and um, I won't drink again until Thursday morning. So it'll clock me in at around close to 30 hours dry fasting. Um, so that seems like a good start. Um, I'll see how I feel at that point and if I want to continue or if I want to just make Thursday a water fasting day, I'll just see how I feel. And um, if I do end up going the day tomorrow with, with dry fasting, I most likely will not exercise. Uh, I did exercise today, just light exercise, uh, 20 minutes on the elliptical, followed by uh, 100 crunches and just 20 push-ups. Um, upper body strength is not ideal right now, um, but I am trying to get my calories as high as possible so I can make this 
um, the results of this fast as dramatic as possible. So getting back to ketosis, I'm just going to go ahead and read off uh, the definition from Google just to kind of give you guys an idea of what it is and what it looks like. Ketosis is a metabolic state in which fat provides most of the fuel for the body. It occurs when there is limited access to glucose or blood sugar, which is the preferred fuel source for many cells in the body. Ketosis is most often associated with ketogenic and very low carb diets. So essentially, um, when you eat, you are giving your body um, a source of glucose, and um, of course it's converted to glycogen, and it's stored as fat or it's burned as energy, um, but your body is always going to go after the most readily available energy source, which is um, whatever you most recently ate until those um, fuel sources have been used up. So that doesn't occur until about 16 to 24 hours, uh, depending on how fat adapted your body is. Uh, so for me, I'm pretty far into ketosis within uh, 44 hours. Some people, it can take anywhere between 24 to 72 to reach full ketosis. So I practice intermittent fasting almost every day, um, at least five days a week. So I'm pretty fat adapted. I most likely would be within um, moderate to um, high ketones within two days, um, which is pretty much what I'm seeing now. If I take this test tomorrow morning, it'll probably be even darker. Um, and especially by the end of the day tomorrow, it'll be as high as possible, um, which would be the case most likely for anyone. If you fast on a 16-8 regimen, you'll kind of see uh, just the start of those benefits of ketosis. Um, maybe within those last one to two hours, your body will start to um, go into what's called autophagy, in which case it's um, literally self-eating. So it'll start to break down um, old cells and, and, and convert them into energy and um, recycle a lot of what's um, been building up in your body. It'll cleanse you out. Um, you'll feel better. Um, you'll, the, of course, the, the water will flush your system. It's just all around a lot of good stuff that's happening um, in, in that ketosis stage. So um, once you're able to reach that point and the body has used up all of its glycogen stores, um, it's going to switch to ketones um, and that is produced by converting fat cells into energy. So instead of converting the readily available source, which is sugar, um, carbohydrates, glycogen, it's gonna switch to the fat cells and it's gonna convert those into ketones, which is a cleaner, a more sustainable source of energy for your body. It's not relying on your last meal, it's relying on however much fat you have and you're pretty much good until you run out, um, as long as you don't have any other underlying health issues that may prevent you from doing extended fasting. I'd say 90% of people would be fine to try a water fast for two to three days and just see how they feel. It'll help with rejuvenation, um, it'll make your skin look really good, um, it'll just flush your whole system out, um, it'll speed up your metabolism depending on how long you do it. I don't know how much of a change you'll see after two to three days. I know with an extended fast, um, 40 days for example, I definitely saw a big change in my metabolism. I was maintaining 270 pounds on 1500 calories a day without exercise and now I'm at about 2500 calories a day without exercise um, is what I can consume at 170 plus pounds. So 100 pound difference and I can eat a thousand calories more. Most of the time when people lose weight they have to eat less. Um, so that's just one of the ways that fasting has um, changed my body in the way that I'm able to process food. Definitely in a more efficient way um, and I definitely see the results years later. Whereas if I did a crash diet, I'd probably see results for a few months and they would be really hard to maintain and I'd most likely just yo-yo back to uh, my starting weight at the start of the diet or um, in most cases even higher um, by five or ten pounds than when I started the diet. Even maintaining the exact same caloric intake, um, when you damage your metabolism, you're actually going to have to eat less calories at the same weight, um, which is what I experienced over the course of years of dieting, uh, crash dieting, starvation diets, you know, anything that I could find on the internet, I would try it. And what I often found is uh, I saw results for a few weeks, um, it got harder and harder to see results, 
and eventually I would just give up and go back to what I was eating before thinking okay worst case scenario I'll just go back to the same weight that I started at uh, most of the time it would end up being five or ten pounds above that weight even eating the same calories that I was eating before which is kind of the evidence that um, your metabolism is, is weakened by those kinds of diets I'm actually going to go ahead and link a video um, in the description below uh, there is a doctor who is really good at explaining you know all the benefits of fasting his name is dr jason fung um, and he has several lectures on youtube regarding the benefits of fasting um, why diets don't work and the fact that we have over a hundred years of research on the subject of, of dieting and fasting and for some reason if you ask most people how to lose weight they'll give you the same advice that they gave you a hundred years ago even though there's a bunch of studies out there that prove that those methods aren't effective. So as my ketone levels go up, my energy levels will start to um, get to a nice medium and I'm hoping that I'll just stay that way for the rest of the fast. Um, obviously getting into ketosis is the hard part, but once you're in there, the rest of the fast is pretty much uh, straightforward. Every day is going to be uh, about the same. Obviously the dry fasting days are going to be a bit harder than the water fasting days. Uh, but besides that, they're all going to look um, pretty similar. I'll try to do my workouts on my water fasting days and um, I'll try to do extra sleeping on my dry fasting days um, because those are definitely going to be a bit harder. Water fasting is substantially easier to maintain than dry fasting. I believe it's said to be three times more intense. Um, I know if I do, uh, the longest I've done a dry fast was three days. I believe I lost like 10 to 12 pounds in three days, whereas water fasting is like one, one and a half pounds a day. I've never done a dry fast in the midst of a water fast. I've always kind of just jumped right into dry or water and not really mixing it up like this. So um, I'm interested to see if maybe it's a little bit easier because I've already done two days of water fasting. I'm already in ketosis. Um, maybe it will be better for me this way. Um, to just incorporate a few days of dry fasting in the midst of this 20-day water slash dry fast. So all things considered, day two was a success. Um, I definitely feel the benefits of ketosis right now. Like I said, all the fogginess in my head that's kind of been lingering throughout the day is gone. Um, I definitely feel much better. I'm probably going to take a few melatonin tablets before I go to bed. Um, it is hard to get a deep sleep when you're on a fast. Um, I will say it definitely is a challenge. Um, at least I know in my experience, um, I definitely feel like it's harder to fall asleep. So the melatonin really helps me. So um, she's not gonna go away. So we're just gonna wrap up this video. So like I said, I'll probably have a cup of tea um, and some water before bed and that'll be it until Thursday morning depending on how I feel. Maybe I will take it for two days, maybe I'll just do the one. Most likely it's just going to be the one and um, we'll kind of see how tomorrow looks. Um, once again, thank you guys so much for tuning in to today's video. Um, please be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Um, I will link Dr. Jason Fung's video in the description below. He's got a lot of great info on everything that I'm talking about and I will see you tomorrow for another video. Thanks for tuning in.